Good day. My name is Sarah McChesney, and on behalf of ProTech Training, I welcome you to today's webinar on how to cope with the challenges of suddenly having to work from home. Please let me introduce you to today's presenters. Rick and Sue High could write the book on how to effectively work from home. They have done so successfully for the better part of three decades. Early in their careers, they both juggled working from their home offices with their young children in the house. As millions of parents around the world are now learning, that in itself is quite the balancing act. ProTech has been fortunate to have been partnered with Rick and Sue for 25 years. And within that time, much of the training that they have delivered for us has been taught virtually and out of their home office. They've been training for this work from home stint for much of their professional lives. Fortunately, for the rest of us, they are more than happy to impart some of the wisdom and tricks that they have collected over the years. With no further ado, I bring you Rick and Sue High. Thanks, Sarah, and a good day to everybody. Um, I'm, I'm Rick High, and uh, we have also Sue High. Sue, you want to say hello? Hello, everybody. Um, we uh, have got the opportunity here to uh, share some things that we have um, uncovered um, over our years of, of doing this type of thing. Uh, many of you have been thrust into this situation quite quickly and probably unprepared, uh, and, and 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 probably have worked through several of the issues that uh, you know you probably have encountered. But yet there are many other things that um, you probably haven't seen yet or or would like to maybe know about or just just general questions you could bounce off uh, of, of us um, we are uh, located uh, about 70 miles southeast of Dallas uh, in a rural community area uh, so we used to live up in the, the Dallas Fort Worth area but uh, we left there in uh, 2004 and uh, <clears throat> enjoy uh, our, our uh, home down here at, at this location because it's a lot quieter than the big city. But I had to be close to an airport. Um, you know, I had to have, I did a lot of flying uh, to different locations around North America, to technology lectures, consulting. And, and so I at least had to have a major airport somewhat close by. But with virtual training, uh, starting about 2008, roughly, um, I started delivering uh, virtual technology classes. Uh, myself, my background is I've been in IT for 43 years. Um, now, you're probably thinking, that, whoa, 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 what is an IT guy sitting here uh, talking about working from home with us when we are not IT people? Don't worry. I've had therapy and medication, so I'm, I'm okay now. Uh, but no, seriously, uh, you know, going through this whole process, your job, whatever your job is, is going to determine how you configure your own internal environment, okay? And, and that's, that's the one thing that, uh, you know, we can all uh, uh, hopefully understand. We all have different needs, different requirements. Um, some of us who may be more uh, from a technology perspective, we need a little more powerful equipment versus somebody who's a little more uh, needs the social interaction. You need higher bandwidth from an internet perspective, so on and so forth. So there's lots and lots of things to consider. And hopefully we can uh, at least give some of you uh, some information about this particular uh, uh, concept of working from home. Now, again, like I said, some of you have been thrust into this pretty quickly. Probably you weren't prepared uh, from your uh, from your to work from home, um, but as you can probably see, there's a lot of things that uh, you know you can do from home. That uh, you know a lot of people would say working from home is a dream job, right? Well, some of you are probably saying I, I, I'm not seeing the dream here yet because you know my kids are running around, my dog's barking, you got this, got that. Um, these are things that that we all face when when we are. Uh, trying to do our job as best we can to be the professionals that, that we are and we're trying to, you know, uh, work through the other things that are occurring uh, around us in our environment that we don't have if we happen to go to the office, okay? So there's definitely some pros working from home, but there's also some challenges working from home, and that's obviously what we want to uh, discuss here. So let's begin by working, uh, let's talking about some of the positives of working from home. I, again, dream job, right? Um, back in the uh, late 80s when I got my first opportunity to work from home. Now, in those days, understand folks, 
we didn't have internet. Uh, we didn't have, we, our, our telephones were actually tied to a wall. Uh, we didn't have cell phones. Um, we had answering machines that were on a, a magnetic tape. So really you didn't know if you're going to get a phone call until you, you, you came back and you saw the machine blanket. So as you can imagine, technology has changed dramatically from, from let's say the mid to late eighties to today, you know, today we could be connected regardless of where we're at. All right. So it gives us this particular opportunity to, uh, uh, to work from home or wherever we want to work from. Okay. So let's talk about some of the, some of the positives here. First of all, first and foremost, you don't have to get up so early. Now think about this. Some of you might have an hour long commute, two hour long commute, or even more one way every day. All right. Now you can spend a little more time sleeping, which in turn can improve your productivity, uh, reduce your stress level. There's a lot of benefits of, of, of you know, working from home, at least from, from, from that perspective. Another thing, casual dress. Oh my gosh. You know, now we didn't have to worry about go spending all this money on uh, suits and, and other formal attire uh, or semi-formal attire to uh, actually, you know, go to work. And the other thing I saw something, I saw this uh, last week, I think it was, that Walmart had reported that there there is a big run on tops. In other words, the shirt aspect um, and not so much bottoms of the clothing uh, 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 line. And the reason for this is because if you're working from a virtual perspective and you're dealing with video cams, that thing, what do people see? They only see the top part of you. You don't see the bottom part of you, right? So there actually is an imbalance in, in terms of uh, uh, what's being sold uh, from that perspective. So that's kind of an interesting little uh, uh, effect of, of people working in a virtual environment. The other thing is traffic. And I know for some of you, some of you might uh, take a, a train to work. Some of you might take a bus to work. So traffic is really not as, uh, I mean, it, yeah, it can cause you to be late and all that kind of stuff, but it's not as frustrating as those who have to physically drive. And let's face it, those of you who go out there and you drive in that traffic, you hit that rush hour traffic, it is sometimes excruciatingly frustrating um, for for. Uh, going through and, and dealing the, the stress of getting to work and the stress of getting home and all the things associated with that, that could be really, really, really a pain. But if you're working from home, you don't have that stress. So again, not only you're getting more sleep, but you are also have lower stress level as a result of the commute. The commute is from your coffee pot to your desk. That's it, pretty much. Okay. So it really, really, really uh, is is a, is a good situation. Now, another thing is you don't have to worry about getting home for certain activities. Now, obviously some of you have kids that are home now because the schools have been closed. Eventually that's gonna change, I don't know when, but it will, and your kids will go back to school and you will, if you're still working from home, you'll have the ability to maybe attend their functions. Whereas before, if you're at work, you're in a meeting, things get delayed, traffic gets in the way, whatever, and you have trouble getting back home to attend a school function. Or uh, another thing that, that uh, you can run into is what happens if, for example, you have a pet uh, who gets really wigged out when it comes to thunderstorms or, or some bad situation like that. Um, now, instead of that pet being destructive or, or having issues, you can be there to help that pet through that particular situation. Another thing to consider, uh, what happens if you have uh, workers, contractors out doing work at your home or your apartment or whatever case may be, deliveries, um, so on and so forth. These are all things that you can, you can handle much better because you are working from home. You're still, be, you're still productive, you still have that benefit, but you can address these other issues. So those are all things that, that are a positive. Saving money on the transportation side of things, whether it be fuel, parking, tolls, whatever the case may be, that is huge for some people. As a matter of exact fact, there are some insurance companies that will actually give you a discount because now you're putting less of a demand on your vehicle, driving much less. And if you fit certain parameters, you can get a, a discount on, you know, your uh, auto insurance. So that, that's a big, that's a big benefit. Another thing is going out for lunch. Come on. 
we know going out for lunch is not necessarily it is expensive okay it's not a cheap thing um or or going out to your local uh, uh, uh breakfast shop or your uh, uh coffee shop or whatever the case may be all of this is, it costs you extra money where you can save a lot of that money because you'll be making your own lunch which is much more affordable um you've got uh, uh your own coffee make, maker there your latte machine or whatever it is you got you can you can have that available there and and you know enjoy your uh, your breaks another side benefit but it could be a double-edged sword is that there are certain things that you can get done around the house that you couldn't do from work okay let's say for example you have laundry to do or you want to go start the washer or the dryer okay how long does that take it doesn't take any time at all so again you can keep those particular things going the dishwasher whatever it is you need to do is from a from a from a, a, a you know housekeeping perspective but it could be very minimal and it consume a very minimal amount of time, which won't impact your productivity at work. But yet you can still continue to get those done. Whereas, you know, if you're back in the in the uh, situation where you're working at the office, guess what? You got to got to wait till you get home to do all the things you got to do those in the evenings or on the weekends, whatever the case may be. So that is another big benefit. Um, Fewer distractions is another one. I mean, you know, yeah, some people, they go to work, they like the interaction of their, their, their colleagues and stuff like that. But it can also be a double-edged sword in that you have individuals coming in, they're interrupting what you're doing, especially if you're trying to concentrate on something and they want to stop by and chat about stuff or do whatever case may be. You won't have those types of distractions. Now, you're probably saying, now, wait a minute, Rick. I got distractions. They're five years old and seven years old, you know, something like that. Yeah, we're going to talk about those. So you, you, you're going to have distractions, but it can be a little from a you know different perspective. It'd be a little bit different. And then, and then finally, you know, one of the one of the other things that uh, uh, companies have seen. Some companies I know have measured the productivity of their employees working from home, and what they've witnessed now is the fact that productivity in many cases has improved all right um, there's a number of factors on why this is but productivity is improved so when we go through this particular time that we're in and we get beyond that time we are now looking at going forward companies may look at working from home a little bit different all right some of them might say oh okay well what we might want to think about doing is uh, uh, having people work you know, 20% of their time at home, or maybe maybe two or three days out of out of the out of the week, they could work from home. Something along those lines, depending upon your job. Okay, they might see that as a benefit, not only from the the standpoint of improved improved productivity, but also from the standpoint of their cost, because now their their requirement to house that many employees is going to be reduced. So therefore, they could save possibly in terms of space and 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 equipment and uh, uh, you know, furniture, all, all of those things, the, the infrastructure there to support housing a number of employees. Um, I know uh, working with some federal agencies that in some cases they allow people to work from home. They still have an obligation by law, I guess it is, to go in a certain amount of times over the course of a pay period, but still it, it you know, improves their productivity because like in, in a lot of those cases, I know some of these people travel long distances to get to work. So it really helps them, you know, from a, from a, a productivity perspective. Um, one, one, one other thing I, I, I did want to mention here, and I forgot to, to, to mention this, um, you know, when you when you work from home uh and 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 you are saving money not only on you know fuel and tolls and parking and all that kind of stuff there's another component to this that a lot of people don't take into consideration and that is the environment what about the fact that our air quality will probably be improved um you know we have less emissions going on because we have we have less vehicles on the road this morning i went out just for just for grins and I went out and I pulled up uh, Dallas uh, traffic webcams and I started looking some of the major corridors in Dallas. And this was at uh, 745 this morning, which, you know, is, is total hands down, full blown rush hour at that point. And it looked to me like it was 6 a.m. Sunday morning. There was nobody out there. And it just blew my mind looking at those webcams because and, and I know 
If I drive to Dallas, I can say, oh, there's Dallas over there on the horizon. I can see it 30 miles out, and, and it's, it's kind of a brown haze right there, right? I bet you now it's quite different. I bet you the air is a lot clearer. And those of you who do work in these major cities, I wonder if you're not experiencing the same thing. The air is actually a lot better. But that's, again, another side benefit of, of not, not you know, uh, going into the office and working from home. So when we talk about all of the praises of working from home, you're saying, well, why not everybody work from home? Why can't we do that? In a lot of cases, we can. All right. A lot of cases, people have jobs that will permit them to work at home, at least in part. OK. However, there are some scenarios where working from home is not really a possibility. Uh, let's say you are a space shuttle pilot. All right. You're not going to work from home. Uh, let's say you are a train engineer. OK. You're not going to work from home. Uh, let's say you are uh, somebody who drives an earth mover or something along those lines. You're not going to work from home. So there's going to be some jobs where we can't do this. But there are other jobs where we can work from home, whether you are in IT, whether you're in marketing, whether you're in, 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 in certain fa facets of banking or sales or whatever the case may be, you can work from home. So how do these people that work from home, how do they, how do, what, what, what drives their success factor? What makes them so successful at working from home? Because I can remember when I first started working from home, I struggled a little bit. And I'll tell you why. I struggled because, well, there's the TV. I just turned TV on. Oh, there's the, there's the boat out there, and, and I'll go get in the boat and go fishing. There's... There's this, there's that. Uh, I, I just go out there and, and mess around in the yard, whatever case may be. I struggle because I, I had these temptations that normally when I'm at home, I'm allowed to do that, right? And when you're at work, you have a certain protocol. But now we're mixing the work and the working from home, uh, work, mixing work and home together. The protocol is a little bit different. What you could do in one environment, you can't do in the other and vice versa because now it's all wadded up into the same thing. People struggle adjusting to that they really do struggle with that they they tend to uh you know because of the physical location they're at they tend to revert to whatever it is they do when they're in that physical location you know what i mean i'm sure some of you do right so what are some of the things that you can do to help this process well first and foremost set a work schedule be very very regimented get up at the same time Go to bed at the same time, Monday through Friday, or whatever your work days are. Okay, some people, you know, might work weekends as a part of their their five day week or six day week, whatever it is they do. So be very, very, very regimented. Um, do not deviate from this. And when I say be regimented, I'm not talking about just you yourself individually, but I'm also talking about everybody else in your home. Okay, have a work week schedule for everybody and then you could have a weekend schedule for everybody okay make it such that there's really no difference between what you were doing before you were uh, thrust into a work from home scenario and then when you're not okay make it pretty much the same now there's a little uh, office hours thing here that uh, somebody come across one time and it's kind of funny because you know you look at it and you're like oh yeah this is my this is my dream job right here you know here most days nine to ten occasionally as early as seven some days as late as twelve to one we close at five thirty or six unless we close at three or four but some days as late as seven or eight some days or afternoons uh, we aren't even there all right uh, this is the dream job correct no it's not a dream job this is not real it's not practical but some people actually this becomes their schedule when they work from home because it's hard for them to regulate their 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 schedule so if you discipline yourself and get yourself on a regimented schedule that will really 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 help your process okay now let's look at a couple of other things here that um you know, we run into when we're, we're hitting this work from home scenario. Um, one of the things is, like I said, what about the other people? Okay. Those folks also should adhere to this type of schedule. It's, it's something that, uh, it's something that, you know, we, we, we all need to share in. All right. Not only from a schedule standpoint, but also from a understanding standpoint. You need to make sure that everyone is fully aware that this is Monday at 
uh, whatever whatever time it is during the day, this is work time. This is not social hour. Uh, you know, we need to be working. All right. And so this should be part of everybody's role. If your kids are there, your children, uh, your your significant other, whoever that is, they also need to understand this is work time. Okay, so we we've got to we got to make sure that we focus on just what we are here to do from a job perspective. Okay, I had a I had an employee one time. There was a period of time where I had an office in Dallas, and and I allowed some of my folks to work from home, the employees. And um, he 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 came in one day and he said, Rick, he says you got to give me you got to give me an office, you got to give me a desk. And I said, why? He goes. Every time I go to work from home, my wife is like, say, hey, you, you, you need to go take the kids and do this. You need to go mow the yard. You need to go do this. He said, during the week, I can't get anything done because if I'm there, she wants me to do all these other things. And he goes, I can't concentrate. I cannot get my job done if I'm physically there. Okay, that's an example I'm talking about. We have to understand that there are work time, work hours. OK, and we stick to those hours and that everybody who happens to be home during those hours understands that as well. So you want to consider setting up uh, a protocol for that. Now, there are some exceptions to the rule there. OK, and the exceptions might be, for example, let's say let's say you you uh, uh, it comes lunchtime. Let's say your lunch hour is 12 to 1. Let's just let's just arbitrarily pick one. OK, if you have your lunch prepared, you can usually eat between 12 and 12, 15. OK, so in, in 10 to 15 minutes, you can usually eat your lunch. So that gives you well, 40, 45, uh, 45 to 50 minutes after you've eaten your lunch to do something. OK, so if you're working from home now, you could do a number of different things. What would you do if you're at the office and you had that extra 45, 50 minutes? You might go out and take a walk. You might go, you know, do you might go run errands or something along those lines. You can still do that. OK. But now you could also go out and say, for example, sometimes when I take a lunch break, I'll go out and I'm done. I got 45 minutes to burn. I might go jump on the tractor and mow for a while. OK, 30 minutes or so. I might go do that. Um, I might go wash a car or something like that. OK, you can go through and do things that you wouldn't typically do if you were at the office because you're at home. But you have to understand that you've got a limited time frame there now. One thing I will caution you on, and that is, uh, you know, if you uh, and for you folks up north, you can do shoveling of your walks. I've had I've had people I've worked with they done that they shovel their walks and driveways during the, the lunch hour. But um, but but the one thing you got to watch out for though is is that depending upon what your job is, say for example, I'm giving a lecture, okay, and and my group is coming back at let's say one o'clock, okay. I need to be back at one o'clock. In fact, I need to be back slightly before one o'clock so that I'm ready and prepared for when we kick it off. OK, so if I took the opportunity to say, well, I'm going to run down to the corner hardware store or the grocery store or whatever, whatever I got to do. And let's say my vehicle broke down. Now I'm in trouble. OK, because I've got a commitment that I have to be back. It is my commitment that that's what I need to do. OK, so you probably if that's your type of situation, you probably wouldn't want to run an errand. All right. Unless the errand is literally like down a block or something like that. Um, but if you have a situation where, let's say, let's say you are you are, uh, you know, just doing some contracts or or sale, uh, doing some sales stuff or whatever case may be. And you're not really interacting with anybody and you run down to the grocery store or whatever. And then your car breaks down. OK, it's going to it's not going to be as severe. You understand? You understand? So it's it's one of those things that look at what your job is and make sure that you don't uh, get yourself into a very very uh, sticky situation. The other thing to remember, besides all that, is take breaks. Just because you're working at home doesn't mean you'd be glued to your machine or your desk or whatever the case may be. You can take breaks just like you do at the office. Get up, walk around. I mean, that's just from a health perspective. You need to do that. You need to get your blood circulating. You need to get your brain cleared. You've got to do those. Because if you don't do those things, then then you're going to uh, uh, have consequences later on down the line. Okay. Now, as far as other things to uh, keep in mind from a critical success perspective, is obviously when everybody, if, if you're if you're the only one working from home and everybody else knows you're working from home, 
set up a separate area if possible, a separate office, uh, a, a separate work area, okay? Um, the other thing uh, to keep in mind is if there happens to be a situation which somebody needs your attention, whether it be children, you know, whoever, uh, have that worked out on how you will do that, okay? Maybe they need to quietly knock and be in their real quiet voice and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, wh whatever it is. Maybe they could text you, say, hey, I need to talk to you about something, you know? So it would be a, a – and, and you could text back say, okay, in 10 minutes. Something like that, some mechanism – is you, you can use to to uh, have it so that you can continue your work uninterrupted and that's really that's really what the key is proper equipment that's another thing again folks each of you have different jobs you have different requirements for your job some of you require computers webcams Microphones. If you're doing, if you're doing, uh, uh, you know, interactive uh, uh, videos, you're doing uh, uh, video conferencing, that type of thing. Get a good quality webcam. Get a good quality microphone. Do not scrimp on those. Okay. Make sure it's good quality. Um, it's not only going to last you a long time, but it's going to be an excellent uh, uh, mechanism as far as communication is concerned. Make sure your computer has the ability to handle what your workload will become or is, whatever that is, okay? Make sure you've got the right computer stuff available. Uh, make sure you have good network architecture. Make sure you uh, can have sufficient Wi-Fi connectivity within your house to not only support your needs, but your uh, uh, others that are staying in, in your home. Make sure your router has uh, security on it so that your neighbors cannot tap into your uh, uh, Wi-Fi, okay? These are all things that you need to do. Now, before some of you take this out of context, don't go home or um, don't, don't get off this, because uh, you're already home, uh, don't get off this, uh, this conference here and then, and then tell whoever you're, you're you know, living with or whatever it is, say, hey, this guy uh, from Texas says I need a $5,000 monitor. No, I did not say that, okay? Get good quality equipment, don't go overboard. Get something that is going to last, be very beneficial, and, and obviously last you a long time. This also includes desk, you know, your, your office chair, your printer. Does your printer need to be a network printer so that you all can share it within your house? Your phones, um, you know, a lot of you have, def you know, cell phone, that's your lifeline, uh, but you need a landline. Do you need that? Okay. Do you have sufficient bandwidth from an internet perspective to support everyone being at home at the same time, okay? If you got kids streaming videos and you got uh, a significant other doing their job and you're doing your job, what kind of bandwidth limitations are gonna impact you, okay? Where I live, trust me, we are on the low end of the spectrum, but it's okay, it works for us, okay? And we're trying to address that particular issue. But for others, for other situations, no way, no way. Could they could they actually handle the jobs that need to be done with uh, our, you know the bandwidth that we have? So that's something to, to to keep in mind. Another important thing to keep in mind is have a backup. What happens if you lose power, internet, phone? What backup do you have? All right. Now, when I say backup, I'm talking about a number of different things. So number one. Um, and whenever, you know, Starbucks opens back up and the libraries open back up and all that kind of stuff, you can always go to one of those as a temporary stopgap, okay, if you have something close by. Auto dealerships is another example. They'll have Wi-Fi there where you could possibly, possibly do some minimal amount of work. Or, or uh, uh, hotel lobbies, if you have a hotel close by, use those as a, as a backup for maybe Wi-Fi connectivity. But understand... Uh, as they say, certain limits apply here. If you're dealing with sensitive data, things along those lines, I probably wouldn't use those types of networks. But if it's, uh, you know, if you're using it just to go ahead and fire off a simple email or something like that to somebody or, or have a text or something along those lines and you need that type of situation, then you could certainly do that. Mobile hotspots is another example, but just make sure that you don't exceed your limit. Um, another form of backup is Universal power supply, UPS. You know, if we lose power, 
Well, you don't want your machines crashing. A lot of times you can keep your machines up for a small period of time. So you can set your machines up to have a have a have basically a battery backup so that if that happens to, to go out, well, then that gives you the opportunity to uh, shut things down in a or in a in a good sequence or good order so that nothing gets damaged through this whole process. So that would be another thing to to consider. Um, one 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 last thing is, and this is a worst case scenario, is uh, if you have um, if you are, for example, let's say you're in a hurricane alley or something like that, you have a situation where you could actually, you know, lose power for extended periods of time. Well, then you can also set up like a home generator type situation. Um, now, I'm not talking about the big generacs. I'm talking about you could even set up a, a, a small generator um, that would provide certain limited power to whatever your facility is. So that's also would be under the heading of a backup. All right. And then, and then one last thing to uh, consider here as far as backup is concerned is have a contingency plan that if you do lose connectivity, um, what can you do to stay in touch with, for example, your office, uh, your, your, your colleagues, uh, uh, if you're an instructor, uh, the students, you know, what can you do to, to, uh, uh, make sure that, you know, you stay in touch there? You know, I tell, I tell people, it's like, look, if I if I'm doing a lecture and I and I lose everything, let's say I lose everything, I lose uh, uh, internet, I lose power, I lose it all. I say, here's what I'm going to do, and I do this at the very beginning. I say, I'm going to call into my cell phone, and we are, are going to connect back in, and we're going to keep working like that for a while until we can kind of get a handle on things, and then go forward from there. Okay, so I already I lay that out up front so that there are no uh, surprises when something does happen. Okay. Okay, so those are those are some things to consider. Some uh, uh, other considerations are. Let me change the page here. Here we go. How, how are you going to stay in touch with uh, your boss? How are you going to stay in touch with your colleagues? What what is the best way to do that? Um, you're going to use your cell phone, uh, landline, email, text instant message, you know, what What do you need to do to stay in touch with them? And I suspect that your organization has certain standards that they follow. I suspect also that some of you know certain individuals respond better to a phone call versus a text message versus an email, okay? So know what works best in terms of your group. Also make sure they know what your work schedule is, okay? Work schedule has a start point and an end point. Um, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, but something called life balance. Just because you're at home doesn't mean you get to work 24 seven. All right. And just because you're at work, you know, doesn't mean you get to work 24 seven. So why do you think that should be the same as his home? It doesn't work that way. So there has to be a way to say, okay, here are my hours. Again, referring back to what I had showed you a little earlier about those office hours don't don't adhere to those hours you know set up a schedule and maintain it now as far as um, as far as different types of communications some people respond better to to visual communications and some people respond better to let's say the the the, the phone calls some people respond better to the textual communication. So this is something I want you to consider here. When it comes down to communication, approximately 55% of our ability to communicate is based on what we see, okay? It's what you see. It's the expression somebody gives you when you say something, whether they roll their eyes, nodding their head yes or no, um, uh, their body language. That is very important in terms of their perception of, of, of the message that you you know you just gave okay whatever that message was that's is how they perceive that that is very important in communication the other part of communication that's very important is what they hear that's 38 percent roughly estimated 38 percent okay so it's the speed of the voice the the speed of the delivery the 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 volume that they're using are they talking quiet are they putting gaps in their words you know wh are they putting emphasis on certain words how do they deliver that from a verbal perspective okay so think about this now folks 55 percent is what we see 38 percent and this is just estimated and 38 percent is what they hear so what does that leave us 
that leaves us 7%. 7% is the actual words, the actual typed words, okay? Now, look at, look at that top bullet there on the slide there, and what you see is, you see email, text, instant message. You probably rely on that more than anything when you're communicating, all right? Or other forms of communication, whether it be social media, you probably rely on that more, just the words. But think about what I just said. That's only 7% effective, okay? So here's the deal. Definitely use email, definitely use text messages or whatever case may be, but don't use it as your means of just communication, okay? Some people, you gotta pick the phone up and you gotta call them, all right? Some people, they wanna see you, all right? They gotta see your smiling face, okay? You don't have to show them what color your slippers are. You could just show them your smile and face. That's really all they need to see, okay? So that's, I want you to think about that as you're going forward here and you're, you're just trying to decide, okay, what's the best way to communicate? Should I just keep texting and texting and texting or should I just hit that dial button and say, okay, let me talk to you. Think about that. That is something that will help you, especially when you are working from home. Now, People want to see your smiling face. What do we use? There's all kinds of software out there. Uh, Zoom, WebEx, GoToMeeting, Skype. There are others that companies use. They have, they have video chats, video sessions. Um, there's all kinds of things that are available out there. Okay. What you need to be aware of, how does all this work? Okay. Be comfortable with that. And this goes back to what I talked about a moment ago. Make sure you have a high quality webcam high quality microphone. Make sure you have that, okay? It's all about quality in communications. But with all of that said, understand this. Be aware of what is behind you. Oh my gosh, you would not believe some of the things that I have seen, okay? I've the seen- The stories we could tell. Uh, yeah, some of the stories we could tell. Uh, I'll just give you a couple of them. One of them, a lady's cat just up and walked across the back of her neck and around her keyboard and stuff like that. And you know what that did? That completely derailed the session to where we're talking about that person's cat. Now, don't, don't misunderstand me. I don't mind animals. I love animals myself. But this is not the time or the place for that, okay? Um, unmade beds, dirty laundry. These are some things that when people think about jumping on a webcam, they need to be very cognizant of what is behind you. So when you look nowadays, you watch, you watch the news. I know you all watch the news. Uh, we have to sometimes. But, but when you see these broadcasters now broadcasting from home, I always look behind. What, okay, what do you got behind you? What do you got behind? Is there anything interesting, anything I could see, anything I could pick up on? And in most cases, it's very neutral. It's very neutral, very uh, 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 unobtrusive. It's, it's nothing, nothing, you know, that would cause any issues. And they do this on purpose because they don't want to give. They want your focus to be on the message they're delivering, not what is behind them or what you are wearing. And that's another thing. Don't wear clothing that could be controversial. Don't wear clothing that may uh, deter from what the message is you're trying to have the meeting about. Don't have anything on that has funnies or has political references or uh, symbols that may offend anybody. I mean, don't, 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 don't do that. Watch what you're wearing. Be very neutral in terms of your attire for this whole process. Because again, we're going back to what I talked about earlier, the 55% and the 38% and the 7%. That's all there when we're having a video chat, okay? So don't detract from that. And one last thing I strongly urge you to do is be punctual, especially if you are the facilitator. Do not be late. There is nothing worse than being on a meeting that somebody else is facilitating and two minutes go by, four minutes go by, five minutes go by, 10 minutes go by, all right? There's nothing worse than that. 
and they haven't shown up yet. That is, 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 is very unnerving. So always be on time, be punctual. As a matter of fact, be early, all right? Even if just a minute or two, be early. Don't set your meetings up such that they're, they're, they're tight back to back like that in case one rolls over. So kind of consider that as you're, as you're going forward. But again, why are we talking about this working from home stuff? Because again, this is where you're gonna be hosting or ho holding your meetings. This is where you're gonna be, all right? So, so consider that. Now, another point I wanna bring up here and that is, if you're going to be on a conference call, video chat, whatever the case may be, make sure that you don't have outside distractions, whether they be, you know, children, uh, pets, whatever the case may be, uh, trains, planes, automobiles, whatever. I mean, I've been I've been in, in video uh, uh, deals where people who leave their they leave their window open, and you can hear. The, the bus driving up and down the, the, the road. You can hear the fire trucks take off or the ambulance. You can hear all that stuff, okay? That, that, that background noise is just not good, okay? It is not good. Or, um, you know, you get the, you get the occasional, uh, all of a sudden you're having a video or you're having a conference call or something like that, and then all of a sudden, you know, FedEx shows up or UPS shows up, they knock on the door, the dog starts barking, the kids start screaming or whatever. Again, be cognizant of that. What can you do to help that whole process along? Well, one of the things you can do is to make sure that your microphone is muted. All right. I've been in, I've been in, in, in sessions where people forget to mute their microphone. And then now I hear all kinds of things. I've heard people washing dishes. I've heard pe people belching. I've heard people snoring. Not that they, they were bored, just they fell asleep. Um, I, I've heard bathroom sounds I don't ever want to hear again. So uh, these are things, that, these are things that, that, that you should really be aware of. Manage your microphone. Maintain radio silence, folks, unless it's your turn to talk. And when you're done talking, mute back up again. All right? That's very, very important. Um, as far as, uh, you know, if you do happen to have children at home, that type of thing, and, and, you know, you, you, you have them doing their studies, like now where we're at, the, the kids, they, they can go pick up these packets and they can do this homeschool stuff. That's really beneficial for, for parents, I think, only from the standpoint of they can be in a office mode as well. And so, like, they have their school time, they have office time, and you can kind of work that, that whole thing going forward it really helps out a lot now once once summer comes that's all going to go out the out the door um so you know you want to you want to make sure that uh, they realize that if you're still going to continue working you know uh during the summer that obviously these are things that that need to be uh addressed or continued on going forward but but you know quiet time no visitors okay that's another thing People shouldn't have visitors during office hours. You shouldn't have visitors during office hours. Neighbors can't just show up and say, hey, you know, let's have a cup of coffee or something like that. No, um, you know, do whatever you got to do to make it look like you are not there, just like you would if you weren't there, right? Close your garage door, put out a do not disturb sign, something along those lines. Um, uh, and, and, and as well as the kids, the kids shouldn't have, you know, friends over or stuff like that, because I can guarantee you, unfortunately, we all know it can get out of hand in some cases. Now, again, this is particularly true if you are in a situation where you're doing a lot of communication, video, conferencing, chat, that, that type of thing. But if you're doing a lot of things that are pretty much just, you know, you're doing paperwork, stuff like that, and it doesn't require a lot of inter intervention, um, what that could effectively do is, is to distract you and, and degrade your efficiency. So this is all something that, you know, you need to kind of consider, just set it up, make the rules just like you were at the office during office hours, okay? And then when you have non-office hours, then go back to whatever that is, all right? So keep, keep, keep that in mind. Now, one last thing before I, I turn it over to Sue, one last, the last page I want to talk about here is, is, is obviously we talked about this a little bit earlier. Make sure that, you know, if you have others that are in your particular environment and they're working from home, 
um, I definitely understand that that you know you each got your work and this is not social okay um, you do have social interaction but it is not social in the sense of you are you know at home and you can do whatever it is you want to do as far as that's concerned so if you have equipment that you need to share make sure that equipment is is uh, co compatible make sure that you have a good network a good Wi-Fi network so that you can reach you know your your connectivity from anywhere in your particular location now another thing is lunchtime lunchtime is always a great time right because people get to eat but understand that we got to prepare the lunch now it, we can't just walk down to the deli or the the bakery or the the restaurant we now have to prepare it so uh you could do it just like you do you know if you, if you go to the office if you prepare your lunch before you go to the office do the same thing here do the same thing so that you can consume your lunch and and then have time to do other things if you want to do that other thing that you can do now that you couldn't do before when you're at the office is have others help you maybe your family is such that you have other individuals that are capable of preparing things okay so so for example if i'm doing a lecture or something along those lines sue may go ahead and she she might go ahead and make lunch so it's ready when when i'm ready for my lunch hours okay so if you have that type of situation you can collaborate with whoever's there and have them help in that particular process now I know some of you are probably thinking because of this this stay at home lockdown shelter in place whatever they call it uh these days you're probably thinking well <laughs> I don't even know how to cook you know and well okay that's another opportunity right that's another opportunity this whole thing is nothing but opportunities so you can learn how to cook and there's all kinds of neat things you can do as far as that and that's a whole nother program that Sue and I will be doing because we love to cook but no, I'm just kidding. We're not going to do that. But um, but you got stuff on TV that'll teach you that. But that's you know understand that prepare your your lunch meal time whatever it is you want to do prepare it in such a manner that you can get it done in the allotted amount of time. Uh, other thing is resist temptation. Turn the TV off. Okay. Don't turn it on and get consumed with all of the news that's out there. Don't do that. Limit your TV activity. You know, obviously put some mechanisms in place to prevent that. And also, obviously, limit your non-work Internet activity, okay? Put some place, uh, some, some things in there to, to uh, uh, address that particular issue. These are all distractions that can impact your productivity. And, again, the goal here is to create an environment where work is work, home is home, and you don't have any crossover there or minimize the crossover. Now, for some of you, you need that social interaction. You go to work because you like to visit people. You like talking to people, that type of thing. Okay. We didn't have this back in the day, but today you got things like FaceTime. You can go connect in and talk to people, whether it be at lunchtime, whether it be at after work, something along those lines, whether it be in the morning. You could have coffee with your friends. I've even seen people having uh, virtual dinners together. Okay, now we can't we can't be we can't be together physically, but we can have virtual dinner. So you got this family over here; they're making this dinner, and this family over here they're making dinner. Okay, we're going to eat at the same time. This and we set up these monitors, and we have a virtual dinner. I'm like, okay, well that's 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 fine. So we can accommodate that. I see you, you see me, that social interaction thing. Okay, but one of the biggest things that I'm going to in my last statement I'm going to make as far as the presentation is concerned is. Be cognizant of work balance, work-life balance. Work should have a limit. Your outside of work life should have a limit. Those things should balance out. It's all too tempting to have work totally consume you. It's all too tempting to do that. You have to limit yourself. Likewise, it's all too tempting for some to have uh the the non-work life uh there available where i could go through oh I, 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 let me just let me just go do this let, let me go out in the yard and do that let me let me run down to the to the to the hardware store and do this or let me go to the, the shopping store to do that I'll, I'll do that work thing a little bit later i'll do the work thing a little bit later and you keep pushing it off pushing it off pushing it off and pretty soon you're behind the eight ball big time okay because you couldn't discipline yourself to to work so that is a big struggle point for a lot of people. A lot of people, when they get put into this 
uh, working from home situation early on. So if you, again, this really goes back to one of the key slides here and this is the one that towards the beginning that says set a schedule and don't deviate that from schedule or if you do deviate, deviate from a minimal perspective, very small, minimal deviations, not big time deviations, okay? Otherwise, you could get out of balance and totally consumed with one side or the other, and neither neither side, if you're totally consumed with it, is good. Okay. So I'm going to give uh, this this last uh, uh, page here uh, to Sue and let her uh, address that one. So let me switch. There we go. So Sue, you want to go ahead and take it? Yeah. Um, I, one of the reasons that I wanted to really talk about this part of of the presentation is that this comes down to you know you might have differences uh in your in your family about how you deal with stress um rick, rick is somebody who deals with stress really really well okay he's he's actually the president now of our our county's emergency services district uh and they they he was a volunteer fireman for years um things just he's an he's an unflappable guy I'm the one, on the other hand, that's going, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. So <laughs> I guess that's why we balance each other pretty well, because uh, he try to keep, tries to keep me uh, from, you know, jumping, jumping off the ledge there. But uh, it, it, this really seems to be uh, something that's, that's taken a hold, especially now with this, this COVID-19 pandemic we have going on every day you just hate turn on the news it's nothing but bad news and you find yourselves maybe consumed with worry you're worrying about maybe your job your finances well-being of family friends that that you have that uh, you're worrying about them getting ill or maybe they are ill or have been ill and so it it, it tends to really really be overpowering and and can be very depressing and very obviously negative for your own personal health. So to just make some suggestions, I know it's sometimes easier said than done, but don't let all the negative media influence your life. Turn off the TV, go for a walk, listen to some music, something that you can do to help relax uh, and, and just turn it off. Read a book um, and make it make it kind of a potato chips for the brain, as I call them, type of book. Something that's just entertaining to take your mind off of, of some of this. It, we, we are going to get through this. I mean, there is no doubt about this. This is, you know, I know the media would have you believe it tomorrow or the next day or whenever is going to be the end of the world. It is not going to be, okay? We are going to get through this. We have, we have uh, gone through a lot of really, really horrible things in this world and life together and and we are going to you know be able to to get forward i mean just just this year you know there were there were 55 million cases of just the flu now the media is not going on and on about those so um you know, and there are a lot of people that have died from just the flu. So, so sometimes just turn that TV off. Um, they, 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 it can just control your life. And um, I'm the one that worries. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like I can talk about this because I, I've had to practice these things to try to turn it off and, and stay positive. Another suggestion um, that I've seen people talk about is doing something to help someone else. Maybe that can make you feel better. Um, I, we helped a, a neighbor find some things they weren't able to find, you know, at, at the store. So you're out, you get ready, to, you are going to make that run to the store. Because uh, down here, our nearest store is 10 miles away. So it's like, okay, check with all the neighbors. Anybody need anything? And uh, try to help them out. Or even uh, volunteering, you know, some of the, the food banks um, that are obviously doing a, a lot of, of work right now, helping people that are, you know, maybe out of work or, or whatever. If they're volunteering, something like that, that might also help you feel better. And talk to others. Talk about your worries, talk about your fears. Don't just keep it all bottled up inside. Make sure you talk with your kids too. Um, the kids, they see you stressed out and that, that you know, echoes back on them and they're, they're thinking, wow, mom or dad's pretty stressed. I should probably worry about this, right? So make sure you talk to them, make sure they realize, you know, it, it's, it's gonna be okay, it really is. Talk to whomever you need. Um, 
to whether you know may, maybe uh, you're religious and and you you know you want to talk to other members of of your church you know that can be helpful too but just you know, again we are going to get through this this is not going to last forever there is light at the end of the tunnel you know we might we might have have changed the way we do some things permanently or we might always uh, find that we're we're kind of a little worried about that that unknown that next wave of whatever virus happens to be but just just try to know that that we will get through this it will be okay and there's resources available as well to help you so search your local area there could be hotlines um, counselors you can speak to just don't let it consume your life get help if you need it um, because losing sleep over it and worrying and trust me I'm I'm you know, I'm the queen of that one. I own that one. Um, Rick says if, if there isn't something to worry about, I'll find something to worry about. I think he's right, unfortunately. But uh, really, try not to let it consume your life, keep you up at night endlessly. Um, worrying about something that we can't fix <laughs> is not, not uh, productive. What we can do is what everyone is telling us to do, our local government, our, our national government, whatever, whatever orders they're telling you to do, whether it's stay at home, shelter in place, whatever it be, do what you can, uh, listen to the authorities, do what you can to stay safe, but, but don't let it consume your life. Um, we will get past this. We will get through it. So those were, those were my talking points. Okay, so I'm going to uh, turn this back over to uh, Sarah. So Sarah, you want to go ahead and take it? Yes, thank you, Rick. And thank you, Rick and Sue, for some very good um, suggestions. And I've been working from home myself for at least three years. And I have to say, I've, I was able to take some things away from your presentation. We do have a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Um, and if anyone is still on the, on the webinar and has something that they would like to ask, now would be a great time to enter that. And um, the first question I have is, and I did not write this, although my husband might argue that I could have, how do you keep from getting on one another's nerves when everyone is home all the time? Oh, that's a great one. Um, <laughs> um, that, 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 that is really, really important. I'm, I'm sure Rick can, can answer to this as well. But what, what we kind of do since, since we're here a lot and we're obviously in a very, you know, we live on 1.2 acres. So, you know, we have room to get out, um, whether it's get out and walk. Rick might go play golf. Um, I might go back in the bedroom and, and watch a recorded show. Um, so you need to have some separate time and space. Um, don't be connected at the hip. You, you do need to have a little bit of separate time. Um, and the kids need to know, too, that, hey, if you're in there, <laughs> I, I, I heard a DJ telling a story the other day that now that the kids are home and, the, and even the ones that are in college are back, back and living at home again. And like he goes in the bathroom and the kids are following in the bathroom. I'm like, OK, really <laughs> close the door, lock the door, whatever you have to do. Say, hey, I'm, I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to take a bubble bath. I'm going to take whatever it is. This is my space and time. So you have to have separate space. I think that's that's the biggest thing. And the other thing is to be respectful to each other. You know, don't be picking at each other constantly. Help each other out. Um, I know we do that. You know, we help each other with with chores around the house. So um, I think being respectful to each other and then give each other time and space so you're not connected that they hit 24 seven. I think that's a big one. So Rick, yeah, that, that's the big one right that? there. Yeah. 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 And the other thing, uh, you know, Sarah, your husband could do is, uh, you, you know, he could buy you your own tractor like I did for Sue. So you could do your own mowing. Hey, I bought that <laughs> tractor. I did buy that tractor. I know. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Too funny. Um, I do have one other question, and I'm actually curious about this as well. Um, you touched upon it earlier how um, obviously a lot of people, when they were working at the traditional office outside of the home, there was a lot of, you know, grabbing lunches on the go at the cafe or whatever that may be, as well as some people even probably grabbing the um, convenience dinners on their way home. Do you have any suggestions for lunch or evening meal planning now that everybody is finding all of their meals are now consumed? or most of them at least, um, under their, on their own roof. 
Um, one thing I I think is important, and and we've done this for years actually, and it's it's only because we live so far from the nearest grocery store. It's it's not convenient to just pop out every day and get whatever it is you're gonna you know get to to make for the day. So plan, try to plan ahead, like a week ahead, maybe even a week to ten days ahead, what you're gonna eat. Uh, each day and and you can change it up I mean it doesn't have to be okay it's Tuesday it's fish sticks or something but um, just meal planning I think in general if if you just plan out ahead so that you make sure you make as few trips out to the grocery store especially now that's important um, as possible so that you have all the ingredients there and in the morning or the night before whatever say okay this is what we're going to have tomorrow. This is what we're going to have for lunch. This is what we're going to have for dinner. And and if there's anything that you can do in terms of maybe preparing things ahead of time, put stuff in the crock pot even. You know, that's a great way to try to uh, make sure that uh, you've got something ready for dinner when dinner comes around. Have the kids help. You know, making sandwiches is something kids can do too. Making sandwiches, making wraps, you know, and it can be fun. It can be a family thing instead of you know always one person's job you can rotate that to say okay on Tuesday you know Rick it's going to be your job to figure out what we're going to eat and and your job to cook and and then you know maybe Tommy tomorrow you know it's your job to do lunch so so everybody has a turn um, the other benefit there is your kids learn how to cook there's nothing worse than I see these adults they you know they they suddenly find themselves out on their own and they don't know how to boil an egg. So <laughs> that's probably a, a great thing is just doing some meal planning ahead of time. Don't wait till the lunchtime hour tolls. You might've heard my clock just told at uh, noon here. Um, don't wait till then to go, Hmm, I wonder what we're going to eat. <laughs> so try to have yeah, it the, planned ahead of time. The other, the other thing uh, um, that, that we also do is sometimes we will uh, prepare something major like uh you know l l let's say for example uh if you if you like uh, beef or something like that okay okay we we, we got smokers here so we would do smokers we might smoke a, a brisket or um a, a roast or something like that well you can you can take that 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 prepared product that you you built or, or uh, created and you could serve that for multiple different meals, multiple different ways. So really, that's the biggest part of it. And then everything else is just like, okay, well, now I need some vegetables, I need some this, and I need some of that. And and you could make it a much quicker process. So that's that's another thing that you can you can also do is when you when you make something, try to make it such that it's something you can consume multiple times for multiple meals. Uh, if you cook like that, it, it it makes the whole cooking process a lot simpler. Yeah, absolutely. We do that an awful lot. Um, one thing we do in the fall is we make our, our annual huge batch of chili, and then I freeze it in, you know, containers so that we have it all throughout the winter. And so I, whenever we need chili, I just thaw, you know, thaw a container and, and we go from there. So it, it's, yeah, it's definitely making large quantities of things and then having, having uh, leftovers uh, that you can, you know, do do other types of things, casseroles and stuff like that. That works out real well too. That's great, and it and I'm noticing an underlying theme through a lot of um, what you have presented to us today, and a lot of it is driven by planning ahead and just kind of um, you know being somewhat disciplined and thinking ahead. And that way, you know, just because you're working from home doesn't mean you can just kind of fly by the seat of your pants on you know, various things, whether it be a meeting or, or a meal prep, so. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Well, that concludes all of the questions that have come in. And um, as you'll see on your screen, uh, first of all, thank you to everybody for joining us today. And thank you to Rick and Sue for taking the time out of your days to share some of your life experiences and expertise on uh, on working from home. And it's certainly, um, like I said, given me some uh, good, good tips to pick up on. And on the screen, you'll notice that we have um, just point of contact if you wanted to uh, visit our website. 
And one of the things that Rick touched upon was the opportunities that lie within um, this situation of us all working from home. And some of you may find that you've got a little bit of extra time on your hands. The resource section on our website will highlight our upcoming free webinars, like today's webinar, as well as we did do a, um, a class, a six-hour class last week on stress. So something that Sue kind of touched upon. Obviously, stress is a huge component with what we're all dealing with right now. So that uh, recording from last week is being edited, and we will be uploading that to our resource section of our website later on, hopefully the end of this week. So keep an eye out for that. As well as if you've found yourself with extra time, and this may be the perfect time to take on some of that training that uh, during the regular work world, um, you don't have that time for. So um, the, the website is a great place to browse our course offerings, 99% of which are offered um, virtually through a live instructor-led training. So um, we've been doing that for almost two out of the three decades that ProTech's been in business. So we couldn't have been better prepared for this uh, delivering virtual training during this time. So. I wanted to thank you all again, and um, Rick and Sue, thank you so much for taking the time. We really appreciate it, and everybody have a great rest of your day.